Is this a nice cold glass of tasty milk or a toxic liquid causing a horrible future of diarrhea? We're out of milk. Come drink your milk. Mija, breakfast. Come drink your milk. Have breakfast with milk and set the stage for a great day. Hey, if your best is freely but not go heel, welcome to another episode. Check out the banana. I got a banana on my back. Woohoo! So today's video is about milk, okay? It's about that white stuff that everybody seems to love chugging down, okay? Is it healthy for you? Is it ethical? You know, we've always been taught to believe that it's, it's vital for healthy bones, you know, for strong bones. We need it for the protein content. It's like the perfect food. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's more to the story. So hopefully we can get through a lot of propaganda and expose the truth. I have a lot of experience with dairy, okay? I come from a farm and my great, my grandpa was a dairy farmer, my great grandpa was a dairy farmer, and I had milk every single day. Raw organic milk straight from the cow every single day. And now when I look back on it, I realize that a lot of our health problems were to do with drinking milk. So it just shows that there's more to this milk than meets the eye. There's more to this milk than the companies, a big corporation wants you to know. Like the dairy industry, they make $11 billion every year just on milk. So you've got to believe that they're pumping a lot of dollars into advertising, into lying to us. So let's get into it. The first thing I want to you know, highlight is the pus factor. The pus that is in milk. It's pretty disgusting. Check this out. You've all seen the milk ads with celebrities and sports figures wearing something that's supposed to look like a milk mustache, right? Well, here's something they don't tell you. Pasteurized milk often contains alarming levels of pus, Gross. also known as somatic cells, which are the same kind of cells produced in a giant zit on your forehead. Hey, Halle Berry, did you know that pus on your lip? Nice. According to the National Milk Producers Federation, the maximum level of pus, which they call somatic cells, allowed in milk currently stands at 750,000 cells per milliliter of milk. So an eight ounce glass of milk can contain up to 180 million pus cells. The dairy industry knows that high levels of so-called somatic cells indicate poor milk quality, and efforts have been made to lower the allowable pus content to just 450,000 cells per milliliter. But those were rejected by the industry in 2011, which favors the higher allowable pus cell count of 750,000 pus cells per milliliter. Now these pus cells, somatic cells, are made with white blood cells produced by the cow in response to an infection of the mammary glands. It is essentially the same liquid you spray on the mirror when you pop a giant nasty zit. Zit with some soy milk, because I don't eat um, dairy. Don't you want to? Because it's disgusting. Mm. Sucking on a cow's booby is uh, not, I'm not into it anymore. What, not, even, not even a bit of cheese? No, no more cheese. No more pus for me. What, what, okay, so so when, when, when we get home from a night out on the... So I make it really happy. <laughs> <laughs> when you say in, in milk, there's actually quite a bit of, of cow pus. And there was a couple of films that I watched about like the food industry that really just, I was like, you know, I can't do it anymore. Pus free, okay? No pus stash here, just a date stash. This is data aid, it's dates and water blended up on high. Look at the creamy head on this. It's amazing, it's a perfect milk substitute and you're not drinking down millions of pus cells from the infected udder of a sick cow. I right, think about it, how disgusting is that? That reason alone is enough for me to never touch dairy or milk ever, ever again. All right, but some people need more reasons, okay? So next up we're gonna talk about RBGH, which is recumbent bovine growth hormone. It's a synthetic hormone that's injected into cows to make them produce more milk. Pretty disgusting. Check this out. Imagine a cow on crack cocaine. That's how author Robert Cohen describes something shot into millions of cows on American farms. In a book called Milk, the Deadly Poison, Robert Cohen attacks what's long been considered the perfect food, claiming it can be a dangerous brew of chemical, biological, and bacterial agents that may also contain a growth hormone he believes can trigger the growth of cancer. How do you like your coffee, Sharon? With cream, please. I've been having such a tough time these days with the stock market the way it is. 
John and I have been shifting our investments to healthcare companies. We just bought some shares of the pharmaceutical company Eli Lilly. They make breast cancer drugs both to treat the disease and reduce the risk of people getting it. Did you know Eli Lilly also makes RBGH? RBGH? What's that? It's a synthetic hormone given to dairy cows. They sell it under the name Pauzolac. It increases the risk of cancer in people who drink milk made from cows treated with it. In fact, companies like General Mills and Walmart have stopped using milk made with RBGH in their products. And Canada and the European Union have even banned it. That's probably why Monsanto sold it to Eli Lilly in the first place. So Eli Lilly is making profits from cancer drugs and a substance that could increase the risk of people getting cancer? Yeah. So Eli Lilly is milking cancer. One of the first stories that Jane came up with was the uh, revelation that most of the milk in the state of Florida and throughout much of the country uh, was adulterated with the effects of bovine growth hormone, the artificial hormone that farmers were injecting into their cows so that they would produce more milk. With Monsanto, I didn't realize how effectively a corporation could work to get something on the marketplace. The levels of coordination they had to have. They had to get university professors into the fold. They had to get experts into the fold. They had to get reporters into the fold. They had to get the public into the fold. And of course, the FDA, let's not leave them out. They had to get the federal regulators convinced that this was a fine and safe product um, to get it onto the marketplace. And they did that. They did that very, very well. It's a great time to be a high-producing cow. Pozilac One Step, bovine somatotropin by Monsanto. The federal government basically rubber-stamped it before they put it on the marketplace. The longest test they did for human toxicity was 90 days on 30 rats. Pozilac is the single most tested new product in history and is now available to you specifically so you can increase your profit potential. And then either Monsanto misreported the results to the FDA or the FDA didn't bother to look in depth at Monsanto's own studies. The scientists within Health Canada looked very carefully at bovine growth hormone and came to very different conclusions than the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. did. Monsanto's engineered growth hormone did not comply with safety requirements. It could be absorbed by the body and therefore did have implications for human health. Mysteriously, that conclusion was deleted from the final published version of their report. They knew there were problems. They saw serious potential human health problems, and they stood up in Canada and said, we're not going to approve this because we don't believe it's safe. The FDA was then on the hot seat. They had to come up with an answer. They didn't come up with a good one. And they never took the opportunity then. I mean, what would they do? Pull it off the market and say, we need to now do the job that we didn't do the first time? They didn't do that. We wrote the story. We had it ready a week beforehand. They bought ads. Farmers in the milk industry say it's safe, but studies suggest a link to cancer. Don't miss this special report from the investigator. That Friday night before the Monday the series was to begin, the fax machine spit out a letter from this very high-priced lawyer in New York that Monsanto had hired. It contained a lot of things that were just off-the-wall false, just demonstrably false. But if you didn't know the story and you didn't know how we had gone about producing it, it uh, would have scared you as a broadcaster, as a manager. And they decided that they would pull the story and they would just check it one more time. But the bottom line was that there was no factual errors in that story. Uh, both sides had been heard from. Both sides had had an opportunity to speak. One week later, Monsanto sent the second letter. And this was even more strongly worded. And it said there will be dire consequences for Fox News if the story airs in Florida. And this time they freaked. They were afraid of being sued, and they were also afraid of losing advertising dollars at all of the stations owned by Rupert Murdoch. And he owned more television stations than any other group in America. I mean, that's 22 television stations. That's a lot of advertising dollars for Roundup, Aspartame, NutraSweet, and uh, other products. So we're just being constantly lied to, folks. So much propaganda, so much greed, so much corruption, and it's all because of this, okay? The truth is being filtered out. The truth is not getting through anymore because the truth gets in the way of the profits, in the way of the big bucks. So you need to take your health into your own hands and look after yourself. Because no one else is going to. These corporations don't give a shit about your health. They actually want you to be sick because that makes them even more money. 
You know, the lies that they're pushing at us, you need to realize, you need to make this connection if you want to be healthy, live a long, healthy life. And I know that some of you out there are probably saying, oh, but I buy raw organic milk, you know, from the local farm and it's healthy and everything like that. Well, like I said before, I grew up on raw organic milk and we had a whole host of health problems because of it. So you need to realize that it's not just about the recumbent bovine growth hormone or the antibiotics in you know, conventional milk. It's also about the naturally occurring hormones in cow's milk, you know, in all bovine milk. Over 80 active hormones, which aren't meant to be in the human body. And when they are, they cause a whole host of problems, including cancer. So check out- Dairy is what we call a mucus forming food. It contains pus and bacteria and viruses. It is actually the breast milk of an animal. And so you have to remember, it is not about hormones that are injected into that animal. It is actually the hormones that are in that breast milk, the same thing that we have within our own species of breast milk. Um, those hormones are not meant to be in a human body. So when they go into our body, our own uh, body goes into complete inflammation. Our antibodies don't understand what these hormones are. There's one hormone called IGF-1, which is insulin-like growth factor one. And when it's taken into the human body, it actually creates, uh, our, makes our pituitary gland secrete more growth hormones. So when you have cancer, that causes cells to replicate. So anybody who's got cancer has got to get off dairy as soon as possible, and yet Western medicine still doesn't seem to see the correlation between the two of them. Does milk increase mucus production? Is that fact or fiction? It appears to be fact. The milk protein casein breaks down in the stomach to produce a substance called casomorphin, which, as its name implies, has opioid effects, which makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint, as species survival may depend on a close maternal bond between infant and mother. The guess is that opioid receptors on the mucus glands in the respiratory tract may respond to the casomorphin from milk, which could potentially stimulate the production and secretion of mucus from these respiratory glands. This may explain why a subgroup of the population who have increased respiratory tract mucus production find that many of their symptoms, including asthma, improve on a dairy elimination diet. So that's some really interesting information on mucus from Dr. Greg in there. Now remember folks, mucus is a transport medium that is designed, it is produced by the body to transport our toxins that we've ingested. You know, we've got millions and millions of people around the world consuming dairy and suffering from sinus problems, respiratory problems, and from acne, skin problems, all related to the dairy they're consuming. You know, when people are getting, they're getting all like, you know, choked up with phlegm and everything like that, but they don't make the connection with that and dairy because the dairy industry is so big, they've got such a powerful voice that they, they basically drown out the truth. But you've got to realize it's a body saying, I do not want the milk from another animal in my system. That's what the body is saying. It's like, no, I don't want that bovine secretion. Do not give it to me. Okay, so we need to make that connection, and when we do, it's really powerful. When I took out the dairy, my skin got so much better. It really, really did my digestion heaps, heaps better. So another thing I've noticed from the milk industry is this push on protein, okay? They're like, oh, you know, our milk's full of protein. It's awesome. It's like the complete food. You need this protein, which is just downright rubbish. It's just bullshit. It really, really is, and we need to wake up to that fact. All right, so this next little section is about the connection between milk protein and cancer. So it's amazing that it's such a lie that it's the opposite of what they're promoting. Check this out. Protein fighter in space. Landing sequence successful. Calculating your suit reserves now. Protein level too low. Eat proteins now. Alert. Not enough protein. <laughs> Sending emergency package. Hurry. You are running out of time. Use your alimentation unit. Analyzing. Positive. Protein level increasing. Good job. Now focus on your mission. Milk. More protein. No stress. You might want to put down those chicken wings and dump that glass of milk. They could be as bad for you as a cigarette. That's according to a new study published in the journal Cell Metabolism Tuesday. Middle-aged people who regularly consume a diet high in animal proteins from meat and dairy products are apparently more likely to die of cancer than those who don't. 
One of the study's authors said in a press release, there's a misconception that because we all eat, understanding nutrition is simple. But the question is not whether a certain diet allows you to do well for three days, but can it help you survive to be 100? To get their results, researchers studied more than 6,000 adults over the age of 50 over the course of 20 years. They found, on average, about 16% of their total daily calories came from protein, and two-thirds of that was animal protein. CBS says researchers then tested the IGFI levels of about 2,200 people in the sample group. Those who consumed the highest levels of animal proteins in their diets were four times more likely to die of cancer than low-protein eaters. According to the study, that rate is similar to the cancer risk between smokers and non-smokers. In a study of 140,000 men this year, 35 grams of dairy protein increase the risk of developing high-grade prostate cancer by 76 percent. So that's like 2 percent increased risk for every gram of milk protein. So like a, a cup of cottage cheese a day could increase one's risk by about 50 percent. Okay, so that's some sp pretty scary shit right there. You know, it's a good reason to give up dairy products today. So another thing to consider is osteoporosis. Oh my god, like since we were young, we've been conditioned by the dairy industry to think that we need milk for healthy bones, for healthy strong bones. And that's because there's been billions and millions of dollars put into, you know, forcing this propaganda onto us. And the fact is that there's never been a study to show that drinking milk actually reduces the risk of fractures. But there has been a number of studies, including a large nurse's study that showed that drinking, the, drinking milk actually increases your risk of fractures by 50%. Okay, that's huge. It actually does the opposite. And you know, you look at the countries in the world like Asia and Africa who have the lowest rate of osteoporosis, they also have the lowest intake of dairy. The dairy industry now has a new campaign. It's called a three a day. Three a day for stronger bones. Three dairy products a day for stronger bones. Do you know where they get that slogan from? You've heard of the five a day program, which is a really good legitimate program. It's now gone up to nine a day because they know five a day of fruits and vegetables really isn't enough, but that's what they started. Now they're up to telling you to eat nine a day. Pretty soon they'll be telling you something really radical like just eat fruits and vegetables <laughs> because that's what the truth is. The okay, so the average calcium intake in underdeveloped countries is 300 to 500 milligrams a day. Try and remember some of these figures. Calcium intake for the average American is 500 to 600 milligrams a day. World Health Organization. World Health Organization that's responsible for the nutritional needs of most people on this earth recommend 400 to 500 milligrams a day. But uh, industry-influenced organizations in this country recommend things, amounts such as 1,000 to 1,300 milligrams a day from the U.S. Food and Nutrition Board and the National Institutes of Health, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams a day. Ask yourself, you see these figures, you ask yourself, well, how in the world could we have recommendations all the way from 150 to 1,500 milligrams a day? How could such numbers exist? The only way such numbers could exist is if calcium intake has little or nothing to do with the health of the bones. And that's what the truth is, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. The uh, dairy industry has influenced no, excuse me, let me say it correctly. The dairy industry has paid for almost all of the research studying the effects of calcium on bone health. Okay? You'll find it, if you look, whenever I read a study, I'll tell you the first thing that I do is I look for who funded it. And if you read the studies that are discussed over the next few minutes and the ones that are in this particular paper, which is in the September 2000 issue of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and you take in Pull the studies out of the library and look at the funding. You'll find almost every one of these studies were paid for by the dairy industry. Interesting. The investigators that published this paper in September of 2000, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, they found 57 studies that talk about the benefits of dairy products on bone health. 57, that's all, just 57. And when they looked at the uh, quality of study design, they decided that only 21 were worth really considering. Uh, protein content of the milk supplement may have a negative effect on calcium balance, possibly through an increase in kidney losses of calcium or through a direct effect on bone resorption. Focus on those words. Protein having a detrimental effect on the calcium. Don't forget those words, because the dairy industries forgot them. This may have been due to an average 30% increase in protein intake during the milk supplementation. It says right there in their paper.
what causes osteoporosis? The bones are designed to last a lifetime. Your bones aren't designed to dissolve when you're 40, 50, or 60 years old. They're designed to last you for 85 years. Strong, to carry you around, to do all the activities that a normal woman or man is supposed to do. So this has to be a disease. There has to be something wrong. We have to be living by the wrong set of rules. And the wrong set of rules is the fact that we are eating a diet not intended for human beings. And remember folks, the World Health Organization, the AMA, and other researchers are yet to discover one single case of calcium deficiency due to a low calcium intake in the history of the human race. So it's something that we do not need to stress about, okay? It's easy to cover our calcium needs. You're getting more calcium in a usable form from plant foods. So definitely look into that. So the next thing I want to talk about is the cruelty factor. Well, I'm not going to really talk about it much because I'm going to show you the disgusting cruelty that goes on in the dairy industry. This happens all around the world. Okay, have a look at this. As a mother, I experience the joy of raising my son every day. But not all moms are so lucky. Like human mothers, cows carry their young for nine months and have strong maternal instincts. And their calves would naturally consume their milk for almost a year. But mother cows on dairy farms have their young traumatically torn away from them shortly after birth so that the milk meant for their calves can be sold to people instead. Male calves are considered little more than a byproduct, and most are either slaughtered for meat or shipped off to the horrific veal industry, where many spend their short lives in tiny crates, unable to even turn around. Female calves are destined for the same sad fate as their mothers. Cows also suffer horrific abuses on dairy farms. Many cows have holes punched through their ears and have their horns or sensitive horn tissue cut or burned off without any painkillers. Some farmers even remove parts of cows' tails with rubber bands or sharp knives. When their milk production declines, cows are sent to slaughter to be ground up into hamburger. A cow's natural lifespan is about 25 years, but cows used by the dairy industry are killed after only four or five years. So welcome to hell on earth for millions of cows every day, every moment of the day. They are stuck in these concentration camps around the world experiencing this sort of horror. And I know some of you are probably like, oh no, that's an isolated incident, you know, dairy farms aren't like that. Yes, they are. They're like this around the world. This is common practice because cows have become commodities. They've become like a product. You know, not like the gentle, amazing beings that they are. They're being treated like shit. And this is not an isolated incident. Okay, so you need to, I know you have a heart, I know you don't want to, you know, support that sort of horror. And I know a lot of you are probably really angry at the men who are beating on the calf and the cows, and understandably so, but you've got to realize when you purchase dairy, you are putting your money towards that industry. You're supporting that sort of treatment. You're saying that's okay. So until you take your money out of that industry, then you're being hypocritical. You, know, you can put that money into dairy alternatives. There's plenty. There's rice, rice milk, oat milk, soy milk. There's um, banana milk, you know, bananas. There's a couple of bananas with water. I've got a recipe on my channel. I'll put a link to it. You know, there's so many alternatives that don't in include the exploitation of these amazing, gentle giants. Okay, so please, you know, consider what your money is going towards. Every dollar you lay down is a vote for what you believe in. 
Here are a few dairy alternatives. The best way to help cows abused by the dairy industry and keep your family healthy is to stock your fridge with delicious vegan foods. Dairy-free milk, cheese, ice cream, and yogurt are readily available at your local grocery or health food store and offer all the nutrition that you and your children need with none of the cholesterol or cruelty found in dairy products. Okay, so that's my video for today. I hope it was educational. Please share it around with your family members, share it around with your friends, anyone you know who is stuck on dairy because we need to get this message out. We need to get it out for the cows, for people's health, for the environment. We need to spread this message as far as we can. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share it around, and I will see you next time. Don't forget to go fruit or woo, root yourself, and see you soon. So where do we go from here? Here's what the science says. Our deeply rooted beliefs about the wholesomeness of milk and dairy products should be reconsidered. We are just beginning to reassess the biological effects of milk and dairy products as human foodstuffs. Human beings are the only species on Earth that from the beginning of infancy into adulthood are subjected to this you know, external hormonal manipulation. Milk developed over the course of mammalian evolution only to be consumed during infancy. The consumption of cow's milk in humans interferes with the sensitive endocrine regulatory network from the fetal period into old age. While dairy is being reevaluated as human food, in the very least, given the tumor-promoting effect of IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor 1, uh, from dairy, patients with tumorous disease should restrict consumption of milk and milk protein. Unfortunately, we don't know if we have a tumor until it gets big enough to be picked up. Banana girl. Free to yourself. Banana girl.